At least, four students are withdrawn every month from November 2016 and January 2017. Headmaster Daniel Ayedin describes the rate of withdrawal as very often. Some parents, where they say because of this thing, they will relocate the area because, because of this thing. So it, it affects teaching and learning. And most of the children will be drawn out from the school. In this moment of despair, authorities can only hope to see an end to the nomadic herdsmen menace. A day, their lost hope will return for the better. If the problem wake up one day to hear that it has now been solved once and for all, then the next thing will be for the entire community, uh, country, to be sensitive well enough that this full and this care is no longer. Uh, evident in the, in the community here. And in that case, enrollment figures will start picking up, especially where parents relocated to other communities. They will now come back as settler farmers, and then their children will also enroll in school. And then uh, retention of pupils will also be improved upon. Teachers to also feel secure. They will accept postings. When the list of newly trained teachers are released to us, you find people from all over coming to such various reasons where they need to take their wars their, 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 uh, wars away. But the situation has been improved and we need to uh, educate the entire country that Asante Achimnov district is safe like all other districts. That is, when we wake up one day and then the, uh, the intelligence people, the security community, give us this assurance that this problem has now been solved once and for all. It will be a source of joy to all of us. On 30th April 2010, Agugu witnessed a confrontation between security operatives, traditional authorities and angry residents who had hit the street in protest over influx of nomadic herdsmen. Though the protesters had duly informed police, they breached protocol on agreed rules and marched straight to Agogomahini's palace. They had also begun the march two hours earlier than the 8.30 a.m. agreed with police. There were groups of the youth who have mobilized themselves and so angry. I rushed to the chief's palace and they were going to jump into the palace to set the palace um, and brace. Goodness, I had to literally bet them. Some of them had also mobilized to go to some other chief they perceived to be supporting the Fulanis. And then they were holding petrol, in gallons of petrol, going to burn their houses. Again, we rushed to do those people and bet them, literally. This was a, a, a hectic period because the police were shooting. As I went there, they were still shooting. And people uh, had gun wounds, had to support them into some vehicles straight to uh, the hospital. So I was moving within, within from the police to the people. And I was lucky I, I was not shot. Because the police were shooting at random. And it wasn't rubber bullets, it was real bullets. Two protesters were injured when they clashed with police over the arrest of one of the leaders, Yao Thomas. He was detained at the Agogo police station. District Commander ASP Samuel Adame was injured in the process. The whole citizens were at the Russia Park waiting for what we could see. The only thing was that to cool them down, to prepare their grievance on paper and present to me and then the MP so that we send it to the government. And then we talked to them to them. He was able to convince them. In the Kwau area, for instance, Kauhine leased some land to a group of nomadic herdsmen about 12 years ago. Though the lease has not been renewed after expiry in 2011, 
the normals and their cattle continue to terrorize residents. Kontihine Nana Simpe Oredu III admits some opinion leaders have been allocating land to nomadic herdsmen at the expense of peace in the area. Near how they say, Ubu Awa no wasasi. Osibi Amasas and Medium de Common Fruenini. Also, as I say, there's a human name. No, they are common Fruenini, no a cotton asso. Why do you seek a cool? Me and Menfa Masas and Man, no a bad habit. And until you see Emperor, you emperor on the hours as you assume to me from common Fruenini. Near see a bed you on the air. Would be a was I said that far. On noon to me, no, no, they are common Fruenini. On the entry, soon to me, can't you see the hang on? Yeah, how no, no. Former Municipal Chief Executive Osebonsu admits some powerful politicians, traditional leaders and security chiefs are complicit in the devastation caused by nomadic herdsmen. He had been at the forefront of the fight against the menace and got a sack over it without the knowledge he believes of the late President Mills. It cost me and my office in the sense that uh, <clears throat> When this problem came up and we were solving it, you know, the Fulani people and the herdsmen and their owners, as I told you, uh, some were big men, so they were all caused my downfall. And then the chief, and the traditional ruler, so also saw that, especially the chief, when he saw that, he first didn't tell me the truth about giving the land to them with danger was also a problem to him. So he reported me to the uh, Minister of Interior and the local government, uh, the local government and then uh, to the National Security. And later on, they invited me. It was there that I saw or I heard that they were planning to remove me because of the Fulani matter. Later, when the president came, he called me at his office, and then he told me the president knew nothing about it. And so I sent a petition to the presidency, and a copy to the Minister of Interior, a copy to the local government minister. It was there that I heard that it was the, 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 our chief, and the local government minister, Honorable Ampofu, and then some party executives connived to remove me. Then I waited for the Council of State to have a meeting. After the meeting, then before he could call me within five minutes, uh, the general secretary, John Nassidin Ketia, came there. He saw me personally and told me it is because of me that I had come there. And I asked him, why? What? You see, uh, he had heard that I'm going to be reinstated. I will never accept that. National Security Air Coordinator Kofi Bentum Kwansen describes the continued support nomadic airsmen enjoy from some local leaders as dangerous. The moral component of enforcing the law has broken because of corruptible influences. And if you go to any of those areas, they will tell you that the big men have cows. You see, before the full men take occupation, they do their scouting and determine who should be compromised, so to speak. So if the people who matter are owning cows, cared for by the Fulani Healthsmen, how do you expect them to put any enthusiasm in dealing with their problem, you see? So the, the failure of law enforcement has been reinforced by corruption, corruption. And that has emboldened the Healthsmen. Some, the, some of the atrocities they commit are horrendous, rape, murder. It isn't the chiefs alone who are compromised. Many people in the society, opinion leaders, non chiefs, it's a problem when the local people are part of the problem. 
The Asante Achim North District Assembly is powerless to deal with the issue now classified as a national security matter. Residents say the Assembly has done little to improve their lot. A chunk of the Assembly's contingency budget allocation is spent on military police team stationed there to maintain law and order. It also pays for treatment of victims of nomadic herdsmen native confrontations. This means no funds are left for education, health, sanitation, road infrastructure and others. The 2016 composite budget identified poor sanitation, high unemployment rate, deforestation and poor rules as areas that need attention. Anthony Quenin is the district coordinating director. When they, we bring in these people, we have to take care of their accommodation, their feeding, water, toiletries, etc., fuel. And you know the security agencies, they have procedures for maintaining their vehicles and the rest. So if they are here and then maybe their vehicle gets spot, instead of sending it there for it to take some days, we had to quickly take care of that. And then when people are also injured, at the hospital, the assembly has to come in and then foot the bills. It's actually draining the assembly's resources because you always budget, and when you budget and then um, you overspend, so far as the security aspect is concerned, you anticipate that something will happen, so you make room for contingency, but at the end of the day, you are overwhelmed by the situation, so it pushes you to go in for other resources to make way for security problems. Despite the much talked about security operations, I did not meet the police military team during my visit to nomadic herdsmen endemic areas. Mr. Quenny's response rather raises concern over the effectiveness of security operations. The police is a security issue and they don't advertise themselves when they are doing their job. They have a modus operandi. If they want people to see, then they will let people to see. So at times, they don't tell people that they are coming. So people do not even know that with us, we know we've been providing them for everything. So they are within the forest. When it gets finished, they come and then we, we, we give them more fuel. Perhaps this explains why in 2016, the assembly wrote to the interior minister requesting more permanent police personnel as it plans to build more police posts in some herdsmen flashpoints. Patabang, Abiwapon Mankala, Kwamiado, Ananikrum and others close to their Fram River are penciled to benefit. The district coordinating director explains reasons for the request. There is a had a meeting, a security distance and then I don't have to disclose, but the essence is to request for more police personnel to be posted into the districts so that they will augment the police force within the district. Residents of Agugu are not just interested in patrol activities of police military team. They rather want to see herdsmen and their cattle evicted from their land to restore their livelihood. The chilling story is told of 40-year-old Ernestina Jemfi and her five children who, for lack of funds, are putting up with a good Samaritan following the killing of her 47-year-old husband, Kwame Free. The family had been kicked out of a room her late husband rented for their inability to raise 1,400 Ghana cities to pay rent. Mr. Ofri and two others were asleep when the armed men attacked them without any provocation at about 10 p.m. in March 2016. Ernestina tells me her kids do not attend school any time the family runs out of money. She wants government to support her family. <laughs> Mr. 
into what was out of my abbas and I can cry beside town was a shame for a man is cut right in Tria, a danica. Who being shan and best slayed and barber can I hold him? Well, I know school she won't cry again. Yan Yan Techua's husband, Solomon Kwakwewa, a worker at the Abubu Hospital Dispensary Unit, was shot at close range in the ribs by suspected armed robbers. His widow, Madame Techua, says her 62 year old husband was callously murdered. She single handedly has been sponsoring education of her five children, one of them in senior high school and another. In nursing training college. Who do motor no bana? Who do kwemuna? Who must be very happy? Oh, na motor no. Ijina e. Who must ijina motor no? Into who must ijina motor no? I no muka aso nsi po musi. I no muka aso skia ono on pebuna. To adi pa no muka chance onda. I no die. Into I die no. I no na kano for proper. No mo aya so mo kohon na. O pejaniti. Sometimes she has had to take loans from the bank to pay her children's fees or, in default, they come home. Her 22-year-old daughter, Faustina Ewampong, a student nurse, tells the story better. When we are looking for money to pay my school fees, I used to cry. Sometimes I ask myself if my father was alive. This struggle, I will not struggle to pay my school fees and a lot of things, so I used to cry when I remembered him. Last month, when we were about to write our exams, I cried because my school fees was not in full paid. And so when we were about to write our exam, they sacked me out of the exam hall because of not paying my school fees in full. So I cried when I came out, I cried. For Mrs. Bida, the callous manner in which her husband, Kokubila, was shot and beheaded at Mpese Mpese is so fresh in her mind. And it's flannel for Nipper Minuno, I'm with Jinet, you know. And it's a summer muka say we, flannel for Minuno Cassay, we, you know. I'm a sound buyer. The Satan Naka say, Now you're cramming me war if you are. And it's a summer yes, and a cramman as we say, or Sadis no or pop, say, or pon or pon. Naka say, I'm here, or back home. And like one of me cool solely, no far bar, no pum one. Good. To pon one good or better, see, I just a old trade, Yana. Or the book of the corner and the penny of Tunis, a fast any penny mean in Temon, a defacey one. No more tone. To pay and then you book or any old Siam Cracope, except the Anna Crane in Abbey and Conan, nor the buffet for. And which said it will be Mupa, which is saying Colano the German. No both will be in you. The Agogo Mamaku wants government to compensate families of victims of normal natives' confrontations. Public relations officer Kwakube says the needs of the affected communities are beyond the community. Everybody is at risk. We are all at risk. And though we haven't got anything to just give to them, those who are affected. Unfortunately, 
The Asante Achim North District Assembly says the Assembly cannot afford such compensation. District Coordinating Director Anthony Quenin says the issue is beyond the Assembly. Whenever there is such a situation, you have to refer the issue to the District Security Committee. If it's beyond the District Security Council, then you forward it to the Regional Security Council. And Agogo situation has gone beyond the District Security Council. It's a national security issue. So the, the alacrity with which the people would have expected us to act to come to their, their, their aid when such a thing happens, we are unable to, to meet them in, in times of difficulties. There are fears the nomadic herdsmen menace in Agogo and Kwau areas could brew more insecurity and lawlessness as natives take more responsibility for their own security. The quest by herdsmen and locals to retaliate the death of friends, relatives and loved ones is a possible motivation for future security breaches. A warning by traditional leaders in Kwau in the eastern region of Ghana and leadership of pressure groups in Agogo to protect lands their forefathers shed blood to bestow on them sends one signal, insecurity and chaos. The general impression, it, the general impression created as if the authorities are important to deal drastically with the issue that has lingered on for the past 40 years, creates layers of security problem, you see, uh, likely to energize and militarize the younger people coming up. Kofi Bentum Kwansen fears the worst could happen. When the chiefs mention a blood factor in defending their land, something serious is going to happen. And that they're not going to sit down for foreigners to come and occupy their land, destroy their crops, rape their women, and so on. And that if no action is taken, they will be compelled to take action on their own. And that's the first signal of a national security crisis, where the people feel left out by the enforcement system, and where their only way of survival is to take the law into their hands to protect themselves. And you can imagine the consequences because it will be done in any organized way, it will be done in the haphazard, callous way. <laughs>